silver is probably the most undervalued asset on the planet. And we look at that from not only its ge geologic relationship going back 5,000 years, but also its price relationship with gold. And uh, it is an asset that is woefully um, underowned, woefully undervalued, and um, has a massive expansion in industrial applications. And over the past three years has taken on a renaissance, if you will, in monetary demand. Um, what really is striking to me, Jesse, is silver is stuck at around $24 an ounce, yet what we have seen over the past few years is the massive, the biggest drawdown of physical supply the world has ever seen from the exchanges. So in other words, with leverage and rhetoric, the big banks, the, the bullion banks, are able to suppress the price of silver, yet a country like India purchased 304 million ounces of uh, of gold, uh, silver last year, took possession of um, 300 million ounces, 304 I think is what it came out to. Um, there's only 33 million ounces in the registered category on COMEX. That's 10 times what is backing the price setting mechanism of the West. If you took the entire ecosystem of, of COMEX, all their vaults, there's less than 300 million ounces in those vaults. Of all of that silver, call it 290 million, only 33 million are bars that are available for delivery backing the contracts. So the term rehypothecation comes into play, where there are more contracts than there are bars backing it. If you look at what the London Metals Exchange just said, that if they see demand anywhere near what it was in 2022 and deliveries associated with that demand off the exchanges, there won't be any silver left in 2023. So what we are witnessing, in my opinion, is the value of a generation. However, when the music stops, if it were my choice, I would own gold because the biggest money in the world, the central banks, the hedge funds, the sovereign wealth funds, the commercial banks, they're all accumulating gold and I believe it will be the backing of a new system. And so not to confuse people by saying it, that silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet and maybe a generational opportunity, I think the way to play it is you realize that for 5,000 years, there was a 16 to 1 relationship to silver to gold. And that was geologically based, but also price based. Even when Isaac Newton was figuring out how we should figure out gold and silver for the currencies of the Royal Mint, it was 16 to 1. If you dug a hole 5,000 years ago, 16 ounces of silver would, would be found for every one ounce of gold. And if you realize that that number has been cut in half, Keith Newmeyer will tell you that it's coming out of the ground right now globally at seven to one, meaning it's been cut in half. That geologic ratio for all of time was 16 to one. Now it's seven to one, yet it's priced at roughly 80 to one. There's a massive disconnection. And if you realize that since the Industrial Revolution, for about 200 years, the average price of gold to silver has been roughly 40 to one. And that has a lot to do with logistics. But at some point, when you have an asset that is, has massive expansions in green and digital applications, the geologic footprint has to come into play. If it's coming out of the ground at 7 to 1, if it's priced at 80 to 1, if it's been for 5,000 years 16 to 1, and the last 200 a price, not geologic, but a price of roughly 40 to 1, we're so far out of whack it's crazy. And so it represents the value of a lifetime, in my opinion. But I think there will come a time when we trade our silver into gold because gold is the money of, of the banks and the money of the kings. And I think that's where, when the music stops, you want 